Hi, I'm Dr. Katie Van and Hubel, PT. I help dancers perform better with online wellness and telehealth physical therapy services. This fabulous person reached, recently reached out to me because we share a common goal of helping dancers feel and perform their best. We had a lot of questions for each other and a lot of common to, to, to share with each other. Um, so we thought we'd share it with all of you, but first, Meet Jenny. Hi everyone. So I'm a dance, a dietitian for dancers uh, and founder of Center Stage Nutrition. So I help dancers fuel for optimal performance and build a healthy relationship with food through one-on-one -on -one counseling or group workshops. Um, so I was a dancer for 17 years and um, got into the field earlier this year because this is really an area I was passionate about. And I also work vir at the uh, virtually and at the Anderson Performance Clinic in Vancouver, BC. Nice to meet everyone. So we're gonna we're gonna dive into some questions that we get asked a lot. So first thing, Jenny, what is a registered dietitian? What do you do? Yes. So we are we like to say we're nutrition experts. So we do go through five years of training. So four years of a nutrition undergrad degree with one year internship. So in a hospital, gaining experiences working with different patient populations. Um, there's a lot of different ways to get an internship now, but. Hospital is one of the main ones, or you can work in uh, different communication setting um, for nutrition, uh, food service. Um, and then we write an exam um, under our college area to become a dietitian. So we're okay. regulated by a college. Um, and, you know, we're really the main thing that really differentiates us is we're taught to look through the evidence of the science that's going on with what works when it comes to nutrition and use those science-based recommendations with our clients or our patients um, and really work with them to, you know, um, build school, build skills to uh, better their nutrition and reach their nutrition goals um, and maintain some lifestyle habits. Okay. Yeah. Physical therapy is very evidence-based too. Um, I've heard nutritionists. So what's the difference between your job as a registered dietitian and what, what is a nutritionist? Yeah. So that's a really good question. One we get a lot. So they are quite different. So a dietitian, again, is kind of regulated by a college. So uh, we do uh, write an exam every five years to maintain our knowledge. And again, we we use that evidence-based approach. Um, a nutritionist is a little bit different. So it can mean a lot of different things. Um, they may not be regulated by a college. They may have taken a couple of courses. Uh, so definitely um, a really different approach. And it could be mean that there are a variety of backgrounds and a variety of knowledge as well. Okay. And how would a dancer know that they need your advice? You know, what, what sort of benefits do they get from working with someone like you? Yeah, so that's another really good question. And, and a lot of people... Um, you know, ask that and dancers are curious about what we can help them with. So, you know, knowing how to fuel your body as a dancer is really important. You know, dancers are athletes and we don't necessarily think of ourselves like that sometimes, um, but we are. And sometimes we're not given the knowledge or the education to know how to fuel like one. Um, so that's what I do work on with dancers is, you know, knowing how to fuel before, during and after dance and how that can really optimize your performance, give you more energy, prevent injuries. Um, that kind of thing. So um, helping them to really build the skills around how to do that. Um, the other piece of what I do and um, where dancers may want to seek advice is maybe having more like guilt and shame around foods. And maybe you've tried other diets before or manipulated your eating in some sort of way to make your body look a certain way or get to a certain weight. Um, so I try to work with dancers to build a healthier relationship with food that doesn't involve that food restriction. So, you know, working towards those small behavioral changes um, and really helping dancers with the skills and tools to use nutrition um, in their career versus looking at it as something to restrict or, you know, a quick fix like a meal plan or something like that is not typically how I go about it. Okay. Hopefully that gives a good background. Um, what about you, Katie? So what does a physical therapist or physiotherapist do and when do people seek advice? So a physical therapist or a physiotherapist is a musculoskeletal expert. So we're not restricted to just looking at the bones or just looking at the muscles. We're looking at how everything works all together. Um, we're movement experts. We uh, improve the quality of life. We use prescribed exercises, a lot of patient education, and we may use a lot of hands-on techniques when we're working in person with patients or clients as well. 
Many patients have injuries, disabilities, other health concerns or conditions that need treatment, but physical therapists or physiotherapists also care for people that just want to become healthier or to prevent future problems. We wear that wellness hat. So even though I can see patients for physical therapy, I can also work with clients who don't necessarily need physical therapy on, on wellness issues concerning the musculoskeletal system specifically. So in, in Canada, a physiotherapist needs to complete their master's degree and then they're licensed or registered in the province or territory where they work. For me as a physical therapist in the United States, I needed to earn a clinical doctorate, a doctor of physical therapy degree, and then also pass state licensure exams for every state where I see PT patients. Gotcha. Okay. So a lot goes into that. It's, it's interesting that nutrition can be the same way we, you know, we help patients in the hospital with certain conditions and that kind of mm -hmm. thing, but you can also, you know, work in a variety of other settings. Whether that's, that's quite broad. Practice. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and, you know, for dancers that are listening, uh, what are exercises to complement dance training? I know there's a lot out there. Um, <laughs> there there's so many, just, just the, in the broadest strokes, you know, we've got the exercises that we do during dance class where you're working on your plies and your tendus and your rond de jambes and fouettes, and you're working on those, those specific skills. And so you can look at that as, of course, exercise because you're doing your technique class activities. But then you also have conditioning exercises which tend to look more like your, your dance style. So if you're doing conditioning for Irish dance or conditioning for ballet class, you're gonna be using a lot of those familiar positions and that terminology um, just with some tweaks. So it's not exactly like you would do it in a traditional ballet class, for example. Cross training activities are where you're, you're taking another step back from dance world, but doing activities that still support you with your dance goals. So you're using other forms of movement, cardiovascular activity, maybe you're running, maybe you're using an elliptical, um, strength training activities. So you can do body weight activities. Pilates is very popular, of course. You might use machines at the gym or lift dumbbells or barbells, but those strength training activities are all geared towards supporting you in your dance life. Vestibular exercises are something else that I tend to specialize in. <laughs> so vestibular exercises work on your balance system so that you don't get dizzy as quickly. You're able to turn more easily. And it's something that even though many dancers are better at this than the average person on the street, we still need to work on it. Um, I'm actually going to be talking about that. I'm going to be presenting at this year's International Association for Dance, Medicine and Science conference coming up soon. So um, I'll be excited to share that. Oh, awesome. When is that happening, Katie? So that is in October. Oh, amazing. Yes. Is, there, um, is that like the main thing you would focus, like if say, if you had any, like a specific recommendation to complement dance training, is vestibular exercise is one of them? So vestibular exercise slots in among other things. It's something that you can do in the dance studio or you can separate, separately exercise or practice. I would, I would encourage dancers certainly to get into that cross training that's often neglected. I know that in the 80s and 90s, I'm showing my age, my ballet teachers always would say, oh, you should never run, you should never lift weights, you shouldn't even mow a lawn because you know, you're gonna build the wrong muscles. And they, they couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> you, you can absolutely weight train and develop the right muscles that support you in dance. And it'll just make you stronger, healthier, less likely to get injured in the long run. Yeah, you know, I can relate to that for sure as well. I remember that. And I didn't really know any other exercises after dance. So I think it's, it's helpful to start early in that and branch out and, you know, you can build, build your flexibility, build muscle, get into all of that at an earlier age. Yeah. Jenny, something I get asked about a lot is different types of diets. Specifically, a lot of dancers ask me about eating vegan or eating low carb. What are your thoughts on how dancers can make informed decisions about their eating styles? Yeah. So, you know, this one comes up all the time. I think when we look at certain diets that we're hopping into, I think it depends, like, what is the reason that we're considering that? So, for example, for vegans, a really popular one for dancers or vegetarian. Um, and, you know, are we doing it for the right reasons? For example, are we just doing it because we think it's going to maybe slim us down a bit more than a regular diet? Um, or is it a concern about the environment? You just don't like meat. So what's the reasoning behind it is what I would also sorry, always start guiding the dancer with, like, what is, what is the goal behind this? 
Um, especially with something like vegan and vegetarian, uh, dancers need to be a bit more aware to make sure they get more protein in because those plant-based sources sometimes aren't as rich in protein as like animal sources. So I, I think you were just talking about that on your Instagram. <laughs> yes, I did talk about that the other day. Um, that's right. So I think, you know, being really aware of like protein and iron rich foods um, as a vegetarian or a vegan, um, you can find iron in like, you know, a lot of animal products, but also um, some grains, some beans, some tofu. Um, those are some options to look for. Um, but, you know, those kind of nutrients I would be more aware of. And, you know, is it going to fit into your preferences, your lifestyle? Is it sustainable for you? Those are some questions that I would always ask dancers before starting any diet. Um, you know, low carb, I think I addressed this the other day too. This is one of my favorite topics. Um, so when we do the low carb thing, um, you know, dancers often don't um, or underestimate how many carbs that they need in a day. So when we restrict it even further, um, carb is like a main source of energy we use by our body. When we don't have that, we use protein um, and protein can't be used for building and repairing our muscles. So we can be in a bit of a deficit if we go the low carb route. Um, and I find oftentimes when people go that route, they end up really craving carbs um, and um, there's a bit of an imbalance there, something that's restricted. So diets are a tricky one, but if anything, you know, ask yourself a couple of questions. Is it sustainable? What's the goal? Does it, do I feel deprived? Am I eliminating nutrients that I need as a dancer? Um, that hopefully will help guide people towards a decision and they can always work with a dietitian like myself to help them make that decision. Do we want to get into the dance screening questions? Sure. So right. definitely people, I feel like not, there aren't as many people familiar with dance screenings as there should be. Like people don't understand what a dance screening is and why it's important. And they kind of, they, what, what kind of happens is that they wait until they're injured <laughs> and then they, they look for somebody like me and they say, oh, now I'm injured. I need to be helped so that I can get back to what I want to do. Whereas if you had done the dance screening, we would have caught stuff early on. And rather than fighting your way back from an injury, you could be honing your technique or your strength or your mobility in specific ways that you need so that you don't get injured in the first place. So yeah, a dance wellness screening is an opportunity to catch those things that can lead to an injury or impaired performance before they become a problem. And they just, they help dancers to better understand what their current functional ability is. Now I offer online dance wellness screenings. So dancers can participate in that from the comfort of their own home, whether you're in Canada, whether you're in the United States, doesn't matter, or other countries. Um, I, I definitely ask my dancers a lot of questions on that screening, even before we meet about um, what is their time spent dancing? What about other exercise activities? What is their injury history? What's their menstrual status? And more, I do ask questions concerning what is their attitude towards food, because I want to be able to get to know if, if there's a problem there that I need to refer to somebody like Jenny <laughs> so that they can get taken care of. Um, the, the physical portion of the dance screening usually includes tests for strength, for mobility, for balance, and I have options also for those that are ballet dancers. So there's specific ballet technique screenings that are evidence-based and point readiness tests that are evidence-based that can really give you a, an idea of um, what, you, what you have, what you don't have, and where you specifically need to go. Not as a member of a class where the teacher is giving everybody the exact same thing in technique class or conditioning class, but you, it's, it's very specific to the individual. Yeah. And it sounds like it's like a, it's a proactive approach essentially, right. Versus being reactive down the road, right. Trying to deal with those issues earlier on. Let's nip things in the bud before they're a problem. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, we started this or we're going to be starting this um, in British Columbia. So I'm from Canada, people that are in the US. Um, and uh, we're starting to do this with dancers at companies in BC. Um, and, you know, it's really along the same lines as what Katie was describing. It's really trying to identify those opportunities to see a healthcare team that, let's say, I'm a part of the Anderson Clinic um, with the physio, with a dietitian, with a mental health counselor really identifying those opportunities so that um, we can tackle those issues or there's problems earlier on. And then that can help throughout your career throughout the season. Um, so you don't have as many injuries, right? Um, you can have 
some strategies to deal with maybe some mental stress or um, ways to reach your nutrition goals. So it's really about tackling it earlier on. Um, you know, some questions that I would ask on those screenings would be around, you know, have you um, not had your period for the last three months, something like that, as we know, that's a, a, a definitely important one to ask, or do you have, um, you know, guilt, uh, food guilt or shame? Have you been skipping meals? Um, and really, do you have interest in nutrition and dance and learning more about that? I do screen for that too, because I just find dance and nutrition is not often educated on an earlier age. So I do actually screen for that education to see people want to learn more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was, this was great, Jenny. Um, I, I can't wait to hear what the viewers have to say and what they think. So guys, if you watch this, first of all, thank you. We love you. Um, but we're going to, we're, we're going to be having some more conversations. So let us know what, what questions you have. Yeah, please. Yeah. Drop some information in the comments. If you have questions or you want to hear us talk about specific things. Um, I know Katie and I will probably announce some educational topic or events within the next coming months to help you guys throughout your season. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, let us know what you think. And if you have any other questions, let us know. All right. Bye for now. Bye.